me. And I'm not going anywhere. Man, when I first heard about this film, I was like, no, please no more. You guys have drove this franchise into the ground. But how did this one turn out? Well, let's see. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Bumblebee, I really do appreciate it. Now, like I said, I wasn't looking forward to this. I was like, Michael Bay, you suck. I'm, I'm just clocked out. You have ruined the franchise of Transformers. I don't want you touching this anymore. Please, no more, no more. But I found out that Michael Bay, the guy that directed all the previous Transformers films, is not directing anymore. It is being directed by Travis Knight, but Michael Bay is still going to be attached as a producer. Now, if you don't know who Travis Knight is, he directed the film Kubo and the Two Strings, which came out a, a few years ago. And while I did like the film, I didn't love it as much as everybody else. Some people were saying that's the best animation of all time. Well, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I just didn't. I wasn't feeling it as much as everybody else. And actually, I don't really want to crap on Michael Bay. Um... I really don't want him touching any more Transformers films, like real talk, because the first one right here that he did, I think this is freaking fantastic. I love this film, but Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon, Age of Extinction, and The Last Night are just all trash garbage to me. I can't stand those films, even though I own them right here. We got Age of Extinction, Age of Extinction, IMAX 3D, uh, Dark of the Moon. I got that right there in uh, Blu-ray 3D as well. Now, you're probably like, Brandon, how are you going to crap on the Transformers film? But you own them. Well, like I said, I really did enjoy the first film. So I have that. Uh, the last night, it sucked. I didn't buy it. The other ones, I got it because uh, Michael Bay is one of the kings of IMAX. And those do have the IMAX ratio. And I, I'm a big proponent of IMAX. Um, and so that's why I wanted to buy those. But let me actually talk about the movie. And I'm like, hurry up, B. Get to the point. Um... I just had to give my expectations, okay? Uh, so my expectations were low early on, but when people start reviewing this film, it just seemed like, okay, you know, we seem like we have a good franchise now. It seems like we're getting a real good Transformers movie that actually focuses more on the Transformers than the humans, and, you know, we get great designs, transformations, and things like that. And for the most part, guys, we do. This is a rebooted uh, Transformers movie. If you have not seen any of the previous Transformers films, that's perfectly fine. And I love this film, guys. I'm not going to waste your time. I love this film. The reason why I love this film is just early on, it did not waste any time for you to see the Transformers, you know, in their G1 suits or in their G1 makeup, their Generation 1 makeup. And I'm not even like a diehard Transformers fan. Like, I've seen the 1984 movie. I haven't seen the series, but, and I also grew up with Beast Wars. So I kind of have a little bit there, but it was just something about the intro of this film. And just seeing all of Cybertron in his prime, in his glory, Autobots versus Decepticons, and all these detailed designs of all these robots and the way they communicate and just, you know, their, their, their voice boxes and the way they transform and the sound effect. And they're just in the middle of this war. I was smiling ear to ear, seriously, nonstop. For the first five to ten minutes of this film, it was everything that I wanted that I did not get in the previous Transformers films. And I loved it. I was saying to myself, by far, this is easily the best Transformers film out of all of them, out of all of Michael Bay. Even though I love Michael Bay, you know, he did Independence Day and he also did Bad Boys 1 and 2. I forgot to mention it earlier. Uh, but I, I was loving the very, very beginning of this film. I, I thought it was just freaking fantastic. Um, something else I want to talk about, of course, is Haley Steinfeld. She is one of the main protagonists in this film. Um, if you don't know her, she starred in True Grit, which is a fantastic film. I believe she either won an Oscar for that film or she was nominated. But either or, uh, she deserved it because she did a great job in that film. I thought she uh, did fantastic. Now, she was also in The Age of 17, which came out recently. A lot of people are raving about that film. I did not like that film. I, I thought, um, I thought it was, I, I just hated her character. To be honest with you, one of the things that just annoyed me, and this may offend you, but I'm just being honest, I thought she was a huge cock tease in that film. It was just too back and forth 
you know, with her character as far as what she wanted to do sexually. I'm just like, wait, 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 wait a minute. You know, I, I'm just going to play it safe and leave and not get involved with you because I don't want any type of reports to allegate. I mean, that's just how I felt about her in that film. But in this film right here, she was a great lead. Um, she had a great backstory that had to do with her dad and swimming and things like that. And you could really tell that they had a, a very great relationship. And uh, I don't want to spoil anything here, but, you know, she's dealing with a lot of pain uh, because of that past relationship. You know, maybe something happened and she's dealing with it. And, you know, they do put that on the forefront of this film. And her acting was great. I mean, I really did feel sorry for her. I felt for her. I felt her pain to a degree. I sympathized with her. I couldn't empathize with her, uh, but I did sympathize with her. And, you know, I, I just enjoyed her for the most part. I mean, you know, I mean, she had a great personality. Um, she had a great presence on screen. She was a strong character. She was like some master mechanic. She wasn't just some, you know, damsel in distress. Oh, come save me, Bumblebee. I don't know what to do. No, it, it was nothing like that. And she, you know, just like I said, had a great performance. As far as Bumblebee is concerned, he is being voiced by uh, Dylan O'Brien. Um, if you don't know Dylan O'Brien, he was the main actor in all the Maze Runner films. And for the most part, I think that, you know, he did a great job. I did enjoy the voice. That is a nice contrast from what we got um, prior in, previ in the previous Transformers films. Bumblebee really didn't talk that much. And I'm not saying he did talk a lot in this film, but the little bit of dialogue that we did get from him. I, I really felt like there was a soul, you know, within his in his body, and and with all the other Transformers too. I mean, the, the in the previous Transformers movies, and I hate really hate to compare this film to those because I feel that films should stand on their own. But I think that's just going to be too difficult for me to do when I'm trying to give you this review. I felt the personality in the robots in the previous films, but in this film right here, it spoke much more volume to me. Like it was not just a soul; it was a spirit and a soul. It was just really something you know in these robots and that's just something that you know made me attach to them a lot more something else that i really did appreciate with this bumblebee film opposed to the previous transformers film well not the first one two three four and five is that this one did not seem like a commercial to where they're trying to promote some car or some new lingerie line or you know new coca-cola product anything like that no there was nothing like that no forced advertising or you know a product placement or anything like that and it's just something that stood out to me i also really do like all the easter eggs that they had from all the previous transformers lore like for example the main uh song or theme song in transformers is a uh, um a song got the touch like you got the touch you got the power you know that was prominent in this film and i'm just I, i'm just like yeah you know when they're playing in the movie you know i'm just like oh wow you know <laughs> i get that reference i get their reference now we also have john cena in this role too now he's becoming a better and better actor to me um he's i mean he's never really even been bad for me in the to me in the most part I, i've never really seen a john cena role and be like, okay goodness gracious he sucks he doesn't need to act anymore of course, you know, he comes from wrestling. He was in Blockers earlier this year. Um, or that made it, I think that was this year. Um, he had a pretty funny comedic role, and he was kind of funny in this film, too. Uh, however, on the flip side, and then I will start to get to my gripes just a little bit, is that the comedic role that he played in this film, it was funny. And, you know, I, I have no problems there, but it took away from the seriousness of the uh, military presence. Because there is a the uh, there is a military presence in this film, of course. It kind of has to be with Transformers and things like that. But the military film in the previous Michael Bay Transformers film was much more stronger, was much more fierce, you know, was much more dominating than it was in this film. Um, that's not to say that it was bad in this film, but I'm just, you know, the military presence, it, it was just like, okay, that's just a force you don't want to be messing with. You know what I'm saying? America! You know, uh, with, you know, all of their weapons and things like that. But it just wasn't as strong in, th in this film. But, you know, that's okay. I do like that we did get a lot of the uh, previous voice actors or the original actors. We did get Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. Um, he stood out as well. Just kind of seeing Optimus Prime in this movie, you know, in his classic, you know, G1 uh, makeup. It, it was it was dope as hell. You know, I, I loved it. I loved it. Also, who stood out to me was Angela Bassett's performance as Shatter. She wasn't just a Decepticon. I mean, she was a Decepticon, but she just wasn't that. She was a character that spoke a lot and had, 
you know, a lot of charisma to her. And I liked it. I liked the facial expressions and the, the smiling of the face. You know, that was very detailed. And just the, 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 the excuse me, the detail in all the transformations like stood out. There was this one scene. I mean, it, it was dope all throughout the movie. But there was this one scene in particular to where Bumblebee and Haley Steinfeld's character, um, Charlie, was on a beach. And it was a wide shot, and they got a full shot of Bumblebee and a full shot of uh, Haley. And it was daytime, too, so you could see everything. And Bumblebee was transforming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I just said to myself, like, damn, they have really stepped up the animation, the CG animation in these films. The Transformer, the Transformers are transforming seamless. It just seems so perfect and photorealistic. They did a great job there. I mean, like, it... it, it you know, this Bumblebee film, it, it does deserve some type of, um, you know, recognition as far as like best, you know, animated um, CGI work at, you know, best effects, visual effects at the um, at the Oscar Awards. You know, they did a great job there. All the other previous Transformers films are all over like two hours, but this one is only an hour and 54 minutes. And so, um, you know, that's great because no one really does like a long movie. The budget came in at $120 million as well, which is the cheapest Transformers movie um, before then. And just overall, it just has like a, a, a really good classic look to it. Now, my gripes in this film is there is a character by the name of Memo. His name is George or Jorge uh, Lindenborg Jr. I really didn't like him. Um, I didn't care for him at all. I don't know why he was put in the film. I thought his role was completely unnecessary. Also, uh, a lot of people complained about the family dynamic in the first film, the first Transformers series with Sam Witwicky and, his, and all that good stuff. I liked it in this one, in that film, or in those films. In this film right here, I really wasn't caring for Charlie's family. Um, her mother was just a little annoying and goofy to me. Um, I guess the, in the first one, Sam's mom was goofy too, but, you know, at the same time, I liked that she was like, could snap and be like, okay, get your shit together. You know what I'm saying? Um, she also, in this film, Charlie had a stepfather that was goofy as well. Um, it, 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 the film spent a little bit too much time with Charlie. I, I, I gave praises with her backstory and the relationship with his father and me trying to sympathize with her character but there was just some times in this film to where i felt they spent a little bit too much time on charlie and her family and especially at the end there was some car chase you know at the end they had to do with the transformers and her family was involved and i'm just like okay guys why why is her family involved in this action scene can we please edit this out of the film i, I don't want it I, i'm not liking it it did kind of end on a high note with laughs, and I will. I did laugh. It was funny, but I did not need it. So, really, my only complaint, complaints, complaints in this film uh, was the character memo, and I felt I didn't really care for the family. Um, there was a, another scene where Bumblebee was kind of fumbling around inside of a house. I really was a bond net, and just kind of too much with um, you know Charlie. And her family. I, I at those times I was just like, oh my god, these Transformers look so great. Bumblebee looks so great. I need more of them. I want to see more of Cybertron. I want to see more of um, Scatter and and Dropkick and what they're doing and what their goal is. Where is Optimus Prime? Please give me more of this Transformers lore. And they do, of course. This film does lead you up for a sequel. They're gonna make more if it's successful. Cause please go see it, guys, because this is a great, great. Uh, Transformers movie. Now, I don't think I like it more than the original, but it's right there close. Um, but it is a great film. I like how I focus on Bumblebee as it should. It didn't, you know, just uh, flood you with all the Decepticons and all the Autobots. That is coming, and I cannot wait because I really did enjoy this film. If I had to rate Bumblebee out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Yes. And do I want to give it an 8 out of 10? Man, what do I, do I want to give it an 8 out of 10? I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Bumblebee or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's go. I forgot. 
I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I knew, I, I couldn't remember, because I'm talking about it, and I'm like, wait, I love the film so much, da 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 No, I'm going to give the film an 8 out of 10. The reason why is there was a plot hole to me that I, I remember I was saying this in the film, and I have to mention it here, because the plot hole to me was, without spoiling it, one of the uh, Transformers, I don't want to say if it was an Autobot or Decepticon, they was able to um, give out their signal to the rest of the universe to let people know where they were. Okay, so if this Transformer should be able to do that, a more advanced, bigger Transformer should be able to do that as well. And they completely ignored that. And that just kind of stood out to me and left a big gaping hole in the plot. So I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Great film, but 8 out of 10. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. If you don't, it's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing links to all that down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Bumblebee. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.